Hi everybody. I'm going to give you the notes for solving for the volume of any prism. The examples we're going to look at are the how to get the volume and surface area of a rectangular prism and the volume and surface area of a triangular prism. This works for any prism and we're going to talk about why that is the case as well. So let's get started. Find your note sheets or get out a piece of paper and write down these notes as we go. Let's start with this one, volume of a prism. So like I said, we're going to do the rectangular prism as an example. The way I'm going to draw that is going to look like this. And then I'm going to add the inside lines and I'm also going to shade this face of it, this bottom face. The measurements that we're going to use are, hold on, i got to find my paper. We're going to use that this length is, th uh, I don't want that red, that this length is 3, this length is 4, and this length is 6. Um, we are going to just in general, the volume for any prism, we take the area of the base and we multiply that by the height of the prism. Now, <clears throat> in this case, the base is this bottom rectangle. Now, the base does not have to be in the bottom. It can be, generally it is. We're gonna look at another example a little bit later where the base is not the bottom. The base, in this case, is a rectangle that is three by four. So the area of the base is three times four. So when we're solving for the volume here, we're gonna take three times four. That is the area of the base. And we're gonna multiply that by the height, which is six. This is the height of the prism, so 6 ends up being my h. When we multiply all that together, 3 times 4 times 6, that ends up being 72 units cubed because we're talking volume. What really ended up happening here, so this is the formula for any prism. If we're wanting a more spe specific formula for a rectangular prism, the formula ends up being length times width times height. The length times the width is the area of the base, and the height is the what gives the height to the prism. Um, this is the shortcut formula for a rectangular prism only. This is the formula for any prism for the volume. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the surface area of the prism that we have drawn here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you two different ways of solving for the surface area of a prism. There's two options. You decide which one you like better. Maybe you only put down the notes for the one that you're most likely to use. Sometimes different shapes lend themselves for to different ways of going about it. So maybe you want both options. One way to do it is just to total all the surface, surfaces, the areas of all the surfaces. And if you look at this, we end up with six different surfaces. There is a front, 
a back, a um, top, a bottom, a left side, a right side, and that is all six of them. So if we're gonna look at the front of this shape, it's this front, tall, skinny rectangle. The dimensions of this front shape are going to be three by six, and it turns out the back is the exact same size. So the front and the back are both three by six. The top ends up being three by four. The bottom ends up being three by four. The left side is going to be this rectangle way over here. It has a base of four and a height of six. So the left side is four by six and the right side is four by six. So we get the areas of all of those. Base times height is how you get the area of any rectangle. This is 18, 18, 12, 12, 24, 24, and we just straight up add all that up. The surface area ends up being 108 units squared, because we're talking area now. That's one way to do it. It's probably the putsy way, but it is visually very understandable. You see all the surfaces, you get the areas for all of them, you add them up, done. The other way you can do it is by talking about the idea of the lateral surface area. And I'm going to draw this one more time down here to just describe what lateral means. The lateral surface area means I take this rectangle and this rectangle and this rectangle and this rectangle. So the front, back, left side, right side. everything except the top and the bottom. And the, the shortcut for this is instead of getting the area of each of them, we treat it like it's one big long rectangle. It ends up being uh, three feet, four feet, three feet, four feet. All of these rectangles unfold to make one big huge rectangle. If I cut it right here and laid it out, uh, what you do to get this is you take the perimeter of the base times the height. So the perimeter of the base is this distance, which is th um, 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4. I go all the way around my base, which is this when it's unrolled. 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4 ends up being 14 times the height, which is 6. Why did I write it like that? There we go. So that means the lateral surface area ends up being 84. All you have to do after you get all the middle stuff figured out is do the top, I haven't done that, or the bottom. So I need the top is three by four, the bottom is three by four, so that's 12 plus 12, which is 24. So my total surface area ends up being 108 again, units squared. I should get the same answer no matter what method I use, or if I don't, then my methods are goofed up. So you want to have these formulas written down. Some are kind of examples, some are kind of formulas. It's just the lateral surface area 
and then the combination of the top and the bottom get added to get you the surface area or all of them, all six surfaces. Okay, let's keep going. Another thing that we're gonna talk about is the idea between the volume, not between, the idea of the volume of a triangular prism and the surface area of a triangular prism. So what we said for the rectangular prism, or just any prism, still applies. To get the volume, you take the area of the base, area of the base, times the height. To get the um, surface area of the triangular prism, you um, total all the surfaces. Same thing, but now let's take a look at a triangle, triangular prism and talk about how it's a little bit different than the rectangular one. So let's start with, let's give it a right triangle because that always helps our math. Doesn't have to be a right triangle. So if I draw the triangle in the front and one in the back, they're supposed to be the same size. Let's make sure everybody knows that these are both right triangles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade this front triangle because that is going to be helpful for me. I'll tell you why in a second. All right. So here's the trick with the triangular prism. This tends to be how they're drawn. It's not the only way you can draw them facing any which way you want to. Again, the base of a prism doesn't have to be the bottom. To me, the base of the prism is the identifying shape of the prism. Even though there's five sides to this prism and three of them are rectangles, most people identify this prism by the fact that it has two triangles. That's why we call it a triangular prism. So to me, the base is the triangle. That's why I highlighted it blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to find, to get the volume, we're going to take the area of the triangle times the height of the prism, which by the way, when your base isn't the bottom, the height isn't the up-down number. In this case, the height is going to be considered the distance between the two bases. Oh, and let's number some of these. So the height here is, um, we're gonna say six. We're gonna call this bottom line a three and this side of the right triangle a four. So the area of the triangle is going to be the base and the height of the triangle. So four times three divided by two, because that's the formula for the area of a triangle, times the height of the prism. So I got height in two places. One's the height of the triangle, one's the height of the prism. Pay attention to that. Four times three is 12 divided by two is six. So I end up with six times six, which gets me 36 units cubed. That is my volume of this prism. Triangle is the base, six is the height of the prism. The distance between the bases is the height. All right, so now it's really in the surface area that it gets a little interesting here. When I take this um, triangle or this prism apart, I end up with two right triangles that's the two bases, the front and the back, if you want to think about it that way. And then I end up with three rectangles. I have one rectangle that's three by six. I have one, that's the bottom. I have another rectangle that's four by six. So this is the bottom. This is the left side. 
And then the side, I'm gonna call it the slanty, slanted side. This ends up being something by six. I don't know how long this line is. The hypotenuse, they didn't give me that number. So I have to take my right triangle, three, four, and solve for the hypotenuse. This is going to be an a squared plus b squared equals c squared Pythagorean theorem. It turns out that this works out really nice, which is why I picked it. The uh, hypotenuse ends up being five. So my um, slanted side ends up being five by six. So if I fill this in the front, the back, the bottom, the um, back, the bottom, the left side, and the slanted side. This is four, three, four times three divided by two is six. 6, the bottom is 3 times 6, which is 18. The left side is 4 times 6, which is 24. The slanted side is 5 times 6, which is 30. I'm going to add all that up, and I end up with 84 units cubed. That is my surface area. Okay, so again, doing all that. Well, let's look at the other one. If we take the lateral surface area, that equals the perimeter times the height. So the perimeter of the base times the height. So I'm gonna take the perimeter of the base, I add up all these sides. 4 plus 3 plus 5. 4, 3, 5. Uh, 4, nope. 4 plus 3 plus 5. That's the perimeter. That ends up being 12. I have to multiply that by 6. So my lateral surface area ends up being 72. Okay, I still have uh, the two bases, so I still need, because um, all this was was the three rectangles. I just did this. Now I need the area of this and this. So the area of the front, the area of the back, um, that was plus six, plus six. So my final answer ends up being 84 units squared, this is a squared, sorry. Surface area is always unit squared. Volume is always units cubed. So you can take these shapes apart to do it. You can use the idea of the ladder, the perimeter of the base times the height, whatever makes more sense to you. You guys just, you have to be able to see it. You have to write this stuff down, you guys. You can't do this as mental math. You write it down, you keep track of all of the sides, that way you're most likely to get it correct. All right, good luck. Thanks.